I have an impossible bug in my code. See if you can figure it out. This code never runs, even though the condition, that is the character to which P points is met. How can that be? This bug turned up deep inside quite a big program, part of which you can see here. It's a program that runs on a microcontroller using the real-time operating system FreeRTOS. Uh, the code here is pretty complicated, but we don't need that for this video. So I've isolated the problem and written a much simpler program to show just the code that we need to take a closer look at. As you see, I've got a pointer here to a character, that's the variable p, and in this loop down here, I increment the pointer to move from one character to the next. And at each turn through the loop, I test if the character has a certain value. That's this uh, value here, this fill pattern, uh, which has been defined as this hexadecimal value at the top here. This happens to be the value of a fill or padding character predefined by the free Artos operating system, but the same sort of problem could arise in all sorts of other circumstances. So keep watching, because one day this might save you a lot of trouble. In the original program, the data is all taken from a stack, where each stack frame has been filled with the fill pattern character, and any data in the stack frame will be some other characters. Don't worry if you don't understand that, because you don't need to know anything more about this to understand the nature of the problem. I can use any characters from any source and the same problem will occur. Here I've created this simple array and it contains just three characters. The first two elements are the fill pattern and then at the end there's a zero. Now each character shown is a number here because contrary to what you might expect if you aren't all that familiar with C, char is a numeric data type. A character, the thing you see on screen, is just a visual representation of a numeric value. Now when this loop moves through this uh, array of characters, the first two characters, fill pattern, should uh, satisfy this test. Uh, the test gets the character pointed to by P and that character is the fill pattern at character one and that should then mean that the body of the loop should execute uh, uh, while that is the fill pattern uh, and the value of i should be incremented and this string should be printed. Well, let's see what happens when I actually run it. I've put a breakpoint on the loop so that's where we'll stop. And here we are, we've stopped at the breakpoint I'm going to step through this code so the next line should execute. I press F10 in Visual Studio. I'm expecting to go into the while loop, press F10. But look, I've fallen straight out of the while loop. The while loop has never executed. And I, as I can see down here, the value of i remains at zero. So this tiny bit of code here is what makes my big and complicated program go wrong. Why does it do that? In this video, I want to explain to you not only how to solve this problem, but how I would go about homing in on any bug to try to find and fix the problem. Okay, as I said, this bug showed up in pretty complicated program. It processes data from the ADC, that's the analog to digital converter stack, which is 256 bytes in length. For reasons I won't go into here, it's vital that the stack doesn't overflow. The code in the original program should show how much of the stack has been used, but it didn't. It always returned zero because the loop never ran. Now, if you want to have a go at fixing this bug, pause the video now and try it out. Then I'll explain what I did. When I first came across this bug, my inclination was to blame somebody else. It's a bug in the compiler, I said, or the computer hardware's gone wrong, or maybe it's the weather, the government, cosmic rays, whatever. Whatever made this go wrong is anything or anyone but me. But once I'd calmed down, I started to look more carefully at the problem, and the first rule of a complicated bug is to simplify it. So that's what I've done. This example is very similar to the original code, and the loop condition fails, so the breakpoint inside the loop is never hit. But maybe there's something funny about the hexadecimal character values. Well, 0xA5 is just the hex 
for 165 in decimal. So let me try that. Okay, so this is my new test, and this time I've got the decimal values, but the loop still doesn't run. So let's try some debugging. Now in Visual Studio, the debugger has this handy immediate window. And when I'm stopped at a breakpoint, I can evaluate bits of code. Since the loop never ran, P should still be pointing to the start of the array. Uh, that is, it should be pointing to the first character, the character with the value 165. I can evaluate star P uh, to see what data is actually there. And to my surprise, it says that it's minus 91. And yet the first element of the array is definitely 165 because that's what I put there. Now, at this point, experienced C programmers might be getting some idea about what's going on. If not, stay with me because I'll explain it all soon. For now, let's carry on debugging with some more tests that I've written. Right, so here I've tried some other values. I've tried the characters uh, which are 0x80 in hex, that's 128 in decimal. Uh, the hex values here, no, they fail. Try them in decimal, 128, same character, just a different, different representation, fails again, no real surprise. Um, let's carry on testing. Got another test down here, so try some other value. I've tried 127 down here instead of 128. And wait a minute, this breakpoint inside the loop has this time been hit. So it works for 127, but it fails for 128. Ah, I think we're on to something at this point. Now, I seem to remember that there's something significant about the number 127. So let me check Microsoft's online reference to see data types. Yep. There it is, the standard numeric values, the ASCII values of the char data type go from minus 128 to 127. That's positive 127. Now that's a hangover from the old days of computing, way back in the early 1960s, when these ASCII characters were first defined. Later on, additional higher values were added to create a much larger range of possible characters. Now, since by default a char has a maximum upper value of 127, that explains why the test for 127 works, but 128 and above do not. Okay, let's just go out of this test. I'm continuing debugging. Goes through the loop and I'm into this other test here. Now, let's verify that my reasoning is correct. So we're in test six now. Now, up to now in the previous tests, the pointer has complicated things. So in this new test, I've really simplified it by removing the pointer and the array, and I just test a single character value. And let's look at the output in the output window, and here you can see what's going on. The value 127, when tested, works. The loop runs, 128 fails, it doesn't run. And if I go back into the immediate window, and uh, I can evaluate those two characters, C, well, that's 127, but C2, that's minus 128. I assigned the value 128 positive, but it's shown to be negative. So what's the fix? As I showed, a char by default can have a value between negative 128 and positive 127. That's because a char is a signed data type. That is, a type that can be either positive or negative. But what happens if I exceed the range, given that its maximum value is 127? Let's take an example. When I assign a value such as 128 or 165, that value goes off the upper end of the range and it wraps around into the negative. Now, if it seems weird that a positive number can suddenly become negative, you may want to take the time to watch another video that I made that explains this in a lot more detail. I have a link to that video down below. C also lets me make a char unsigned, like uh, this one here. Now, with an unsigned char, there are no negative values in the range. The range of possible values goes from 
0 to positive 255. So to fix my problem, I need to make this pointer point to an unsigned char. And that's all I had to do to fix my program. Try it out. Let's run it. So I've gone inside the loop here. You can see this breakpoint is hit. And again, and now outside the loop, and I can see the results here. OK, so you can see that it has indeed uh, executed the code in the loop. Everything now works correctly. The test in the loop works. The loop runs when the character is matched. This is an example of a potentially catastrophic bug due to a really simple problem. Of course, it only seems simple now when the bug's been fixed, as all bugs always do. But if you are still baffled about how a positive value can mysteriously be changed into a negative value, you need to know more about how numbers, how data types in general, are represented by the computer and also by the C language. I have a few other lessons that will help understand that. One of those goes into the inner details of signed and unsigned numbers and specifically explains why positive numbers may suddenly turn negative. But for a deeper understanding of the problem, I'd suggest that you also watch two lessons on bits, bytes and binary numbers. The links to those are once more under this video. Thanks for watching. If you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel and click the bell to be notified whenever I upload a new video.